So this is something I don't really see talked about a lot with Godot. Uh, there's actually a lot of trickery you can do with GDScript, or probably even scripts in general, uh, no one ever really talks about. So I, at least as far as I know, I don't know, I don't really watch other people's tutorials very often. So in a lot of these kind of RPG style games, you have a lot of uh, stuff, uh, unique behaviors. Uh, I kind of go over a little bit of this in a uh, little bit about how you can just kind of recreate the command pattern using callables, which is a completely different video. You should look at it though, if you don't know what I'm talking about. But here I've got the little test room I've got with a couple of different NPC behaviors uh, and some jank with the collision. Uh, this guy just like walked around circles, uh, don't mind the collision. And that's all like kind of just are done here and there. Uh, this is a simple NPC, which I, I keep missing the collider. It's very thin, uh, very simple, just displays messages in some metadata. And then a uh, specific NPC, which is designed exclusively for the sake of uh, combat. Uh, these are three archetypes of NPCs, uh, and more can easily be added. What I'm particularly looking at here is uh, how we can do some nice little fun export script nonsense in order to make the behaviors more modular and more not requiring a million nodes which i i actually really don't like like node heavy code uh so let me dip into that a bit okay so here's all three of these npcs uh, and the players and the party members that follow the players all have the same base script it's just field actor uh there is no inheritance involved because i kind of really hate the chain inheritance problem that just becomes too messy so for this first setup, uh, here we've got simple. Uh, right here is where it's all important. You'll notice I have a behavior uh, variable in this. The behavior variable is literally just export GD script. Uh, so if you look over at the code all the way over there, it's actually very simple uh, because the actors don't actually really need a lot of uh, complex behavior. You don't have to worry about exactly what this means, but this is the basic, like every tick and initialization logic. Uh, if there is a unique actor type, uh, it can actually just have a different script here. And as long as these functions are the same name, uh, it will all just work. Uh, we pass in what the field actor is, as that is the context. And then for here, we pass in float for delta time because that we just need access to that. We don't have to get it from the engine itself because we are actually getting it from process by the field actor. So for here, here uh, is the actual actor. Uh, this is a lot of stuff you don't have to pay attention to. Uh, but over here is the important part. Uh, right here. Export var behavior of type GD script. Yeah, so I, you can just do this. Uh, you can actually do two ways. You can export script or GD script. Uh, I don't think I hear this talked about very often because I don't even know if it's actually legal behavior. I don't think they intend for this because there are some weird side effects to keep in mind, uh, which I'll cover in a moment. But the important part is this just works. Uh, and so I can just drag and drop a script instead of, say, using a load or preload or passing in the string to the file and then I move the script around and then everything's broken and really wish scripts would just behave the same way other assets and resources do and then to contrast uh, let me grab the player real fast here's the player instead of giving them functionality for just basic setting up of NPCs uh, right over here I actually have a player script and this handles a lot of initialization logic as well as some minor, not important stuff that involves input. Uh, every tick input is handled. Uh, so I do, would just reference all that instead. One of these days I'll sort the scripts, but right now I will not. Um, but this is all its own logic and its own contained script, and I don't have to think about it. If I do need unique uh, behavior for a specific thing like a player, 
for example, I actually pass in uh, references to menus when you open up a menu. If you actually look, it's like Dragon Quest or something where you press the button and then you get the menu open. Don't mind that the NPCs just flew in. Yeah, so it just handles all that stuff itself. That's not too important though, but anyways, you can do that with meta values on the node or resource or whatever. Just by using meta, you can throw special case information on if you really need to. It's kind of useful that way that it is a feature. You might as well use it. For example, on the follower, uh, they have their own follower behavior and that just kind of does its own thing. It just gets uh, a particularly cached position from the player's previous positions and then it just moves towards it and that just handles everything on its own. Uh, I'm not going to go into the specifics of how I do it because it actually ties into some other stuff I'll go into in a second. But uh, the way it actually knows which follower it is is just through meta. Right here there's the follower ID and the follower ID for the basic is zero which would actually just be the player position. We don't want that so uh, but in the field root where all of the followers are actually pre-allocated uh, they have their own ID in the meta field really you got to use metas more they just don't really get attention much uh, so it would be like follower one two three which you can just have the custom scripting uh, pass in whatever it needs through the get meta and uh, you can even check it does it have the meta does it uh, need to use it and you can throw errors or just ignore it if you don't really need to worry about that. This is all cool, but I needed especially powerful systems for multiple reasons. Uh, first off, uh, I actually need unique behavior not just for how it behaves per tick, but also for what happens if you were to interact with it and whether or not you're talking, checking, or you're, say, using an item or a skill on it or some other arbitrary condition that I need to have support for. And that is where extra behaviors in the actor block here come in. Importantly is the event script right here. It is just a dictionary that takes a text ID that will be called and it will refer to a GD script. Um, or really any script you need uh, it'll just be dropped in there and uh, it's, there we go show in file system here's the simple NPC for example I did show a little bit of this before here for example uh, I am generating it, the the calls for these like the interaction systems they're they're gonna do a function call and then they're going to expect a series of callables, an array of callables, uh, and that behavior will be what drives the uh, the events that happen in the field and asynchronous needle. But you can return anything from these scripts, uh, and that's very powerful. Uh, but to get over this, here, messages, just generate the callables, it does that on the talk, and because I can easily switch these out, this is just a simple NPC. I know that there's going to be NPCs which just talk. Maybe they have one emotion and everything else is entirely driven by the node or the actor or whatever. And I don't need to actually make any more unique behavior. But if I make a cutscene of some kind or miniature play thing like the one that moves around. For example, the uh, see the actor who just walks in a circle after talking to you and then talks to you more. If I need more specialized move that, I can give them a specialized script. On talk here, as I, I've shown this before, uh, we just generate that same, that same cutscene is kind of like built up and then returned and then it's just executed separately. GD scripts are their own assets. Like scripts in general, they're just their own assets. Uh, without this, you would have to make a separate node or series of nodes. You have to make nodes for every unique behavior and then just, ugh, it sucks. Uh, meta values make up for the lack of inspector uh, availability because you don't have nodes, but they can be a little cumbersome. Uh, good luck with that. 
To demonstrate another use of this, I go all the way back to Cropping Claw 1. Uh, this is a lot less clean uh, because Cropping Claw 1 was just a prototype to get Cropping Claw 2 into a good position. And if you look over here, we have a familiar behavior slot. And in the skill behavior, it's actually technically a script rather than a GD script. Uh, functionally, these are the same. Uh, at least for how uh, how we're using it uh, But there are some nuances that I've noticed and again I don't even know if this is actually supposed to be used this way, but I also don't care So this is a uh, how we generically use if generically is a word now the Skills behavior and don't mind all the nonsense of combat and plan and stuff. That's just the context but at the very bottom, you see await behavior dot execute combat and plan. Uh, this is what will execute whatever script is currently inside the um, the skill. Uh, so, for example, the majority just used one simple script. Uh, I say simple; it's not simple. Uh, it's actually quite a cluttered mess. So, the majority of the time, the code that's uh, being run is this one in like majority of scripts. You'll see I use extend script. That all honestly just does not matter. Uh, I also use class names here uh, for different archetypes of scripts. Uh, that that's kind of archaic for me. You can do this if you have a reason to receive this kind of behavior uh, and like push it somewhere else. Uh, but it, I really don't think I benefited much from using it this way. I don't think I used it at all except for this combat skill standard maybe. Uh, just because there were times I maybe just wanted to pass in this execute and I would have overrides. But here, uh, we receive the combat plan, and then this is all just a single script that runs whatever context it needs to. Uh, so we have just pushing messages to the old messaging system. Uh, we have checking crisis for whatever reason, uh, and... This is because a lot of, uh, if you actually looked at that uh, snail hugging, you'll see that skills in general just had a lot of allocated stuff. And nowadays with the functional programming and more aggressive use of this uh, modularizing of scripts and parts of behavior, this is actually not as necessary. Because think about it, you could just, instead of saying is spell or is technique, or some specific really complex context you can actually just put in a behavior and return a certain value uh, you don't have to do that I would really honestly save that for like really specific cases where it's not easy to just have a toggle or two uh, but it is in fact a thing you can do uh, and because of all this though all of the specific behaviors of scripts can be set out so uh, if I wanted a skill that did a math attack instead of like, the normal damage formulas, I would just write the script to use that instead. So now, if you see below me, uh, these are all the different unique behaviors that Crop and Claw 1 has. Some of them even unused, but for example, there's Combat Skill Flea. That's just the flea button, basically. Combat Skill Libra, that's the code that I think runs when you use a bestiary to view enemy systems. Uh, gear uses an item, overwrites uh, what skill you're actually using. There's a lot of trickery there too. But yeah, all of this, uh, combat waste turn, yeah, all of this is just uh, single scripts that encode the data instead of unique classes. Again, I get tired of unique classes. Unique classes clutter everything. So by just not using classes and instead using static behavior with scripts that you can just drop in the inspector, it's much easier. If I wanted the hug ability to do nothing, I could literally drop the script right there into behavior. And now anytime hug is used instead of attacking the player, it'll just waste the turn. So I want to cover a few catches because like I said, this is a very weird system. First off, uh, you cannot actually per se inheritance script or gd script uh, i don't think it actually matters if you have something a class name extend gd script i don't know how the engine actually 
Beatles about that or whether or not every script inherently is a GD script or a CS for C sharp script or what. Engine doesn't like it if you do something like say, I wanted to do a combat behavior and then I wanted it to have it so the inspector would instead of looking for GD script, it look for a behavior script. Unfortunately, that will not work. Another catch is that uh, you cannot instance GD scripts and most likely scripts in general. Uh, you'll notice there are no objects with GD script as a script. It is in fact just a, all those behaviors I was using, they were static functions and maybe constants or if I'm very desperate or trying to rush something together, I'll use a static variable for temporary storage. But it's not the wisest to do, quite honestly. Uh, so instead, uh, all behaviors and contexts come from whatever's supposed to call that script or that command or whatever. Uh, so you cannot have, uh, you cannot at least easily instantiate, quote unquote, a GD script. Uh, there's multiple layers to Godot's uh, scripting and like API interfacing stuff. So a lot of this is going to sound bonkers or weird. Uh, and one to really watch out for is to be careful of serializing and duplication nonsense. Because uh, I have had cases, I don't remember exactly all the conditions because I'm too lazy to look at my old code. Uh, but you could, in theory, have a deep clone duplication of say a dictionary and it contains something that uses an external script like this uh, and then you serialize that to a file uh, instead of having a reference to the scripts uh, file exact file in the in the program itself which normally it does do and I have seen that work uh, it may also possibly just straight up copy the script source because the script source is just text and that's serializable. So your, for whatever context you might be saving something like that, you might end up uh, exporting out <laughs> just straight up GD script into your resource. Combat history was what I was using with that. And uh, in the new system of AI, I managed to accidentally export the AI script into the combat history uh, as like an external combat log. So that kind of thing can happen. I just think it's because no one really expects. Like again, I think a lot of these are weirdnesses due to no one expecting to actually have a GD scripts being used modularly like this. I think the, the engine's usually designed for people to just throw nodes together, but I don't do that. I don't like to use nodes for everything. Sometimes I just want a se all all behavior to be contained in just one script or maybe a, a couple of namespace files that are all linked together with preloads. And uh, resources, you can't even do node-based resourcing because that's just not a thing. You have to use metadata or specialized resources. And again, we get to specialization. I hate specialization unless a, I have a reason to use a certain way. Anyways, that's all. I just wanted to like document that this is a feature and a thing you can do because no one really seems to talk about it as far as I know. And if people have, they've probably been told it's not really a supported feature, which kind of sucks because it's really useful, as you've seen. Uh, it might take a while if you're used to being able to shove everything in the inspector and all, but I, who cares? I just don't want to have a billion specialized classes for everything. I want to be able to move my behavior around more freely. Uh, besides, static behavior is just more flexible once you learn how to program it right.